everybody. This is American Nana, and uh, welcome. This is the part three to the Nevada judge that was attacked while actually handing down the sentence to this young man. And um, we had gone on a long break, and then we came back. Sorry, and this is where we pick up. So let's get to it. They, they still have it muted, I guess. I got it as close as I could. I don't want to just jump all around so we can watch this young man. This all may seem futile to everybody, but I've seen their portion, so I just kind of wanted you to watch before. Makes a little interesting turn. And I've got a feeling as to why, but We'll see in just a few minutes. Maybe I'll let it go on too much. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm really trying to get better at what I do. Do I want to just present it? Do I want to blabber? Do I want to chat? <laughs> mm. If I was to sit and just record every single thing that I flip through in one day, because I'm just so curious, it would really be interesting. I think this has gone on a little bit too much, though, Nana. This is this is really getting to be a little bit too much. Let's see. Mm. Smiling right there. All right. Let's see. I think that's my dog trying to get in. Are you serious? Also be guilty but mentally ill count one. And that's our understanding, Your Honor. I quit. Tap out. I tap out. This is it. This is where we're gonna start. Oh my gosh. Oh, how rude, and I'm eating a sucker. I call it a sucker. It's not a sucker. It's a hard candy. But I thought I was on mute. My apologies. You all may be seated. Okay, are we ready to proceed? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Um... You, are there any representations that you'd like to make? Your Honor, um, it is my understanding that Mr. Redden is going to plead guilty but mentally ill to all of the charges in the second amended criminal or second amended indictment that was previously filed. The state is willing to stipulate to allow him to withdraw his prior pleas of guilty so that he can enter pleas of guilty but mentally ill to counts two through seven. Did y'all see that coming?
I'm going to tell you why I think it happened. I think because when the first witness got up there and described everything so thoroughly, and then they had that break, I think his attorney had a speaking, you know, spoke to him about it because they were trying to downplay the attack, but, you know, and they were really stuck on the fact which really irritated me that, bless her heart, the judge didn't remember specifics. But I'll tell you what her clerk did. Her clerk gave an excellent description of what happened. That's why I think they did this. But I, you know, could be dead wrong. And he's also being guilty but mentally ill. And that's our understanding, Your Honor. He's prepared to go forth with the plea. Okay. All right. Um, but in terms of the negotiations, there are, there are no negotiations. Each side will argue for a lawful sentence under the statute. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Wren? Yes. I'm going to be asking your lawyer to state in open court uh, the substance of the plea agreement. In other words, the primary, the most important terms of the negotiations or agreement between you and the state. Um, actually, this is a guilty plea memorandum. Correct. Okay. Okay. I want you to listen carefully as after your lawyer's done speaking, I'm going to ask you if you heard him and if you agree that this is what uh, the parties have agreed to enter into. All right? Okay. Okay. Mr. Your, your Honor, he's agreed to plead guilty, but mentally ill to count one, attempted murder, victim 60 years of age or older. Count two, battery on a protected person, resulting in substantial bodily harm, victim over 60 years of age or older. Count three, intimidating a public officer. Count four, battery on an officer resulting in substantial bodily harm. Count five, performance of act or neglect of duty in willful or wanton disregard of safety of persons or property resulting in substantial bodily harm or death. Count six, battery by prisoner. Count seven, unlawful act related to human excrement or bodily fluid. Okay, um, and this is what I will do. Once I canvass Mr. Redden, I will, uh, and, uh, I will go ahead and allow him to withdraw his guilty plea with respect to the counts two through seven. Did I get the numbers right? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Redden? Yes. Did you hear your lawyer to state the substance of the guilty plea memorandum? Um, yes. Okay. Did he accurately state um, the terms that you would agree in order to resolve the criminal charges lodged against you? Um, yes. Do you read, write, and understand the English? I do. Okay. Um, did you receive a copy of the um, guilty plea memorandum? I did. Did you review the uh, second amended indictment? Um, yes. I did. Okay. Did you receive a copy of that as well? Um, yes. Okay. Do you need me to read the second amended uh, uh, indictment now and before we take your plea? No, no. Okay. Accepting your guilty plea, there's a number of questions I'm going to have to ask you in order to assure me you are entering a valid plea. If you do not understand any of my questions, will you please let me know so that I can rephrase them? I will. If at any time you wish to take a break in the proceedings so, so that you can discuss matters in private with your lawyer, will you let me know so that I can give you an opportunity to do so? Yes. How old are you, sir? I'm 31. Where were you born? Las Vegas, Nevada. What is the extent of your education? Um, 12. Did you graduate from high school? No. Would it be fair to say you dropped out in the 12th grade? Yes. Okay. You finished the 11th grade? Yes. Okay. Uh, are you taking any medications or suffering from any medical, physical, or mental health conditions that would interfere with your ability to understand these proceedings and the terms of the guilty plea memorandum? Um, I am on mental health meds, but um, as long as I'm on that, I don't believe that it will affect the need of my uh, Okay. Well, I, I know that you've got to be on some medications, sir. I think we've been discussing that here today. But I want to know, are you taking any medications or suffering from any medical, physical, or mental health conditions that would interfere with your ability to understand what is going on here today or the terms of the guilty plea memorandum? Oh, no. You fully understand? Yes. Have you had an ample opportunity to discuss your case with your lawyer, Mr. Arnold? Yes. Are you satisfied to have him as your lawyer and the advice that he's given you? Yes. <clears throat> Do you understand you are entitled to have an attorney represent you at every stage of the proceeding lodged against you? Yes. Do you understand you're entitled to a trial by jury, at which in order to convict you, all of the jurors would have to agree that you are guilty? Yes. Do you understand at trial you would be presumed to be innocent, and the state would have to overcome that presumption and prove you guilty beyond a reasonable doubt? Yes. Do you understand that to do this, the witnesses for the state would have to come to court and testify in your presence, and your lawyer could cross-examine those witnesses? Yes. Do you also understand that your lawyer could object to evidence offered by the state at the trial and could call witnesses and present evidence on your behalf? Yes. 
do you understand at trial, while you have the right to testify if you chose to do so, you also would have the right not to testify. And if you decided not to testify at your trial, the state would not be able to use the fact you did not testify in any way to prove its case. Yes. Do you understand that by entering your guilty pleas, you are giving up these rights and other rights listed in the guilty plea memorandum? Yes. Are you aware of the penalties for committing uh, the crimes which are listed in count one through count seven? Um, yes. I'd like to review all of them with you. This will take a little bit of time, but I want to make sure you understand, okay? Do you understand, um, as a consequence of um, entering a plea of guilty but mentally ill, you have the burden of establishing your mental illness by a preponderance of the evidence? Oh, yes. Do you understand that except as otherwise provided by specific statute, as a defendant who has entered such a plea, you would be subject to the same criminal, civil, and administrative penalties and procedures as a defendant who regularly just pleads guilty? Wait, so sure. Do you understand, except as provided by specific statute, as a defendant who has entered a, a plea of guilty but mentally ill, you are subject to the same criminal, civil, and administrative penalties and procedures as a, de a defendant who pleads guilty? Yes. Okay. Okay, do you understand that if the court finds, by a preponderance of the evidence, you are not mentally ill at the time of sentencing, that the court may impose any sentence that the court is authorized to impose upon a defendant who pleads or is found guilty of the same offense, or that you are mentally ill at the time of sentencing, or if you, I guess, if you are mentally ill at the time of sentencing, the court shall impose any sentence the court is authorized to impose upon a defendant who pleads or is found guilty of the same offense, and include in that sentence an order that I... Uh, that you, during the period of your confinement or probation, be given or obtain such treatment as is medically indicated for your mental illness. Do you understand that? Yes. That's all set forth on page two of the guilty plea memorandum. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, do you understand that as a consequence of your plea of guilty but mentally ill, the court must sentence you as follows. First, with respect to count one, the court must sentence you to imprisonment in the Nevada Department of Corrections for a minimum term of not less than two years and a maximum term of not more than 20 years, plus a consecutive sentence of one year to 20 years for the age enhancement. Do you understand that? Yes. Do you understand the minimum term of imprisonment may not exceed 40% of the maximum term of imprisonment? Yes. Do you also understand that you also may be fined? Yes. Okay. Do you uh, understand that you are eligible for probation for the offense to which you are pleading guilty? Yes, I understand. Do you, and you, do you also understand, except as provided by statute, the question of whether you receive probation is in the discretion of the sentencing judge? Yes. With respect to count two, do you understand that the court must sentence you to imprisonment in the Nevada Department of Corrections for a minimum term of not less than two years and a maximum term of not more than 10 years, plus a consecutive sentence of two years, minimum two years, to 10 years for the age enhancement? Yes. Do you, uh, again, as with count one, do you understand that the minimum term of imprisonment may not exceed 40% of the maximum term of imprisonment? Yes. Do you also understand in that situation you may also be fined for that? Yes. Um, and as, uh, like count one, do you also understand you are eligible for probation for the uh, offense to which you are pleading guilty, meaning count two? Yes. Um, with respect to count three, do you understand that the court must sentence you to imprisonment in the Nevada Department of Corrections for a minimum term of not less than one year and a maximum term of not more than five years? Yes. Do you also understand that you could be fined up to $10,000? Yes. And as with respect to counts one and two, the minimum term of imprisonment may not exceed 40% of the maximum term of imprisonment? Yes. And I might save a little bit of time, but the... Uh, the, the uh, term minimum term of imprisonment may not exceed 40% of the maximum term of imprisonment was, would also apply to counts 4, 5, and 6, and 7. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. And you also understand that you are eligible for probation with yes. respect to those other counts. Yes. As well as count 3. Yes. Your Honor, I think count 7 is actually non-provisional. Okay. Okay. The, uh, I will get to count 7. You, um, I thank you, counsel, for doing that. Um, you are not eligible for probation with respect to count 7. We will get to that in a few moments. Do you understand that? Yes. Okay. With respect to count 4, do you understand the court must sentence you to imprisonment in the Nevada Department of Corrections for a minimum term of not less than two years and a maximum term of not more than 10 years? Yes. Do you understand in that instance you may be fined uh, up to $10,000? Yes. <laughs> do you, with respect to count five, do you understand that the court must sentence you to imprisonment in the Nevada Department of Corrections for a minimum term of not less than one year and a maximum term of not more than five years? Um, yes. Do you also understand you could be fined up to $10,000 with respect to that count? Yes. With respect to count six, do you understand that the court must sentence you to imprisonment in the Nevada Department of Corrections for a minimum term of not less than one year and a maximum term of not more than six years? Yes. Do you also understand in that instance you could be fined up to $5,000? Yes. And that again is with respect to count six. With respect to count seven, do you understand that the court must sentence you to imprisonment in the Nevada Department of Corrections for a minimum term of not less than two years and a maximum term of not more than 10 years? Yes. Okay. And you do understand that you are not eligible for probation for the offense to which you're pleading guilty with respect to count seven? Yes. And do you understand you could also be fined up to $10,000? Yes. And in any case, that the law does require you to pay certain administrative assessment fees? Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you also understand the court may order you to make restitution to any victim of the offense to which you're pleading guilty? Yes. Has anyone threatened you or forced you to plead guilty by uh, but mentally ill? No. Has anyone told you if you do not plead guilty but mentally ill, some other adverse action will be taken against you? No. <clears throat> and I take it that... You have uh, 
You've received a copy of the guilty plea memorandum. Um, yes. Okay. And your signature is affixed there on, on page eight. Is that right? That's true. And your lawyer, Mr. Arnold, he uh, signed the uh, guilty plea memorandum on page nine. Yes. Prior to signing the guilty plea memorandum, did you read it? Yes, I did. Did you discuss it with your lawyer before you signed it? Yeah, I did. Did he answer all of your questions? Yes, he did. Did you uh, sign the guilty plea uh, uh, memorandum uh, uh, willfully, knowingly, and voluntarily? Yes. Do you feel you understand the terms of the guilty plea memorandum? I do. Has anyone made any promise to you other than those set forth within the guilty plea memorandum that induced or caused you to plead guilty but mentally ill? Um, I'm sorry. Sure. Has anyone made any promise to you other than those set forth within the guilty plea memorandum that induced or caused you to plead, plead guilty but mentally ill? No. You understand that later on, um, when there are requests with respect to sentences or any uh, sentences that may be agreed to by your lawyer and uh, the lawyers for the state would not be binding upon a sentencing judge. Um, I don't, I don't understand what that means. Do you understand that sentencing is totally up to me? Oh, yes. That's irrespective of whatever your attorney argues to me. Mm -hmm. If later on there's deals made between your lawyer and the lawyers for the state, I don't have to abide by those deals. You understand that? Yes. Okay. And do you also understand uh, that you might, on the basis of your guilty plea, but mentally ill, receive, um, if there was any deals going on that, um, that you could receive a more severe sentence than that, either requested, recommended, stipulated, argued by your lawyer. Yes. Okay. Do you have any questions as to what you're alleged to have done within the um, second amended indictment? No. Do I need to review all that with him? Okay. He's never him as account one, Your Honor. Um, I think the parties agree to incorporate the factual basis from his previous plea as account two. There's seven that he's never been as account one. Okay, let me go through that. I don't have that right in front of me, so let me pull it up. I'm going to go through all the counts. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Okay, I'm looking at the, well, it's called the amended indictment, um, and it was filed on August 30th. It's the second amendment that was filed on Tuesday, Your Honor. That's the attorney Dr. Boyle. Okay. Okay, I need it. Yeah, apparently it, it was filed in open court counsel, and I, for whatever reason, haven't made it yet, but they're going to do it like right this minute. I'm going to email them right now, Your Honor. I can email them for a copy if you want to read them with what If you've got a file stamp on it, I'd be happy to do that. Um, in fact, counsel, would you approach? Sure. Okay, while they're uh, doing this, I haven't seen this portion. I'm just going to let it play out because we don't have a whole lot longer to go. Um, you know, I, I'm surprised. But then again, there I go, because I think I said no, no, no way was he, you know, he, it was just a game. So apparent, I believe I said that anyway. But the uh, medication he's on, and I, I mean, I'm just surprised that he's taking accountability for what he did, to be honest. I'm just, so here we go. Oh, yeah, she has to bring the jury in to release them or something. I'm just saying, it's not that okay, much. I got it, Ms. Mercer. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Mr. Redden? Yes. Um, they had, uh, she's got a copy that is file stamped. Uh, so, uh, well, it's not file stamped, but it is the one that was filed. Um, I'm going to go ahead and review the second amended indictment with you, if I may, and tell me if this is what you did. Um, and again, you're pleading guilty, but mentally ill. I appreciate that. So I may uh, not add all of that. Okay, tell me if this is what you did with respect to count one, attempt murder, victim 60 years of age or older, that you willfully and lawfully and feloniously and with malice aforethought attempt to kill Judge Mary Kay Holtis, who is 60 years of age or older, to wit, 
during your rendition of sentence, and once you knew she was about to sentence you to prison, did leap over defense counsel's table into the well of the courtroom, and thereafter rushing towards the judicial bench and jumping over it Superman style, directly into Judge Mary Kay Holtis's judicial space, landing directly on top of her, and immediately attacking Judge Mary Kay Holtis by grabbing her, pulling her hair, placing her hands around her throat, and or hitting her on the head by manner and means unknown. Did you do that, sir? Yes. Okay. With respect to count two, tell me if this is what you did. That, uh, And by the way, this is on or about January 3rd, uh, 2024 in Clark County, Nevada. Mm -hmm. That uh, with respect to bodily, uh, battery on protected person resulting in substantial bodily harm, victor, victim over 60 years of age or older, that you did willfully and lawfully and knowingly use force or violence upon the person of another, to wit, Judge Mary Kay Holtis, who is 60 years of age or older and is a protected person employed as an 8th Judicial District Court Judge, while Judge Mary Kay Holtis was performing the duties of an 8th Judicial District Court Judge, which you knew or should have known that Judge Mary Kay Holtis was an 8th Judicial District Court Judge by grabbing her, pulling her hair, placing her hands around her throat, and or hitting her on the head by manner and means unknown, resulting in substantial bodily harm to Judge Mary Kay Holtis. Did you do that, sir? Yes. Okay, with respect to count three, uh, intimidating public officer that on the same date, place, and time, that tell me if this is what you did, that you did willfully, unlawfully, and feloniously, directly or indirectly, address any threat or intimidation to a public officer, namely Judge Mary Kay Holtis, a judicial officer with intent to induce her, contrary to, to her duty to, make, to do, make, commit, or delay any act, decision, or determination with use of physical force or the immediate threat of such force to wit during the rendition of sentence, and once you knew she was about to sentence you to prison, did leap over defense counsel's table into the well of the courtroom, thereafter rushing towards the judicial bench and jumping over it Superman style, directly into Judge Mary Kay Holtis's judicial space, landing directly on top of her and immediately attacking Judge Mary Kay Holtis by grabbing her, pulling her hair, placing your hands around her throat, and or hitting her on, uh, on the head by manner and means unknown. Did you do that, sir? Yes. Count four, battery on an officer resulting in substantial bodily harm. On the same date um, and uh, period, of, uh, same date and um, place. Um, tell me if this is what you did. That you did willfully, unlawfully, and knowingly use force or violence upon the person of another. To wit, Jay Cabralda, who has performed the duties of a peace officer employed with the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, which you knew or should have known that Jay Cabralda was an officer by punching and/or kicking and/or pushing the officer. Such acts resulting in substantial bodily harm. Did you do that, sir? Yes. Okay. With respect to count five, at the same date, place, and time. Tell me if this is what you did. That. Um, count five, performance of act or neglect of duty in willful or wanton disregard of safety of persons or property resulting in substantial bodily harm or death. That you did then and there unlawfully, willfully, unlawfully, feloniously perform an act in willful or wanton disregard of the safety of persons or property in the following manner to wit, by jumping over the defense counsel's table into the well of the courtroom, thereafter rushing at the judicial bench and leaping over it Superman style to attack and or kill the judge, ca causing Marshal S. Brandon and others to respond in defense of, de of your actions towards the judge, resulting in substantial bodily harm or death to Marshal S. Brandon. Did you do that, sir? Yes. Okay. With respect to count six, battery by prisoner. Um, on the same date uh, and place and time, tell me if this is what you did, that you did willfully, unlawfully, feloniously, and knowingly use force or violence upon the person of another, to wit, Officer C. Boo, by spitting on Officer C. Boo, defendant uh, you at the time of the offense being a prisoner in lawful custody or confinement. Did you do that, sir? Yes. With respect to count seven, uh, on the same date and place, um, uh, and the act being unlawful act relating to human excrement or bodily fluid, Tell me if this is what you did, that you did then and there, willfully, unlawfully, feloniously, and intentionally use, propel, discharge, or spread any human excrement or bodily fluid consisting of saliva with the intent to have the excrement or bodily fluid come into physical contact with any portion of the body of another person or under circumstances in which the excrement or bodily fluid was reasonably likely to have come into contact with any portion of the body of another person. To it, Officer C. Boo, whether or not such contact actually occurred while you were a prisoner in lawful confinement, you committing the offense in the following manner to it by spitting saliva on Officer did you do that, sir? Yes. Okay. And for that reason, you are pleading guilty to committing the crimes by uh, pleading guilty but mentally ill to committing the crimes of count one, attempt to murder victims 60 years of age or older, a category B felony in violation of NRS 200.010, NRS 200.030, NRS 193.153, and NRS 193.167. Count two, battery on a protected person resulting in substantial bodily harm. Victim over 60 years of age or older, a Category B felony, in violation of NRS 200.481. Count 3, intimidating public officer, a Category C felony, in violation of NRS 199.300. Count 4, battery on an officer resulting in substantial bodily harm, a Category B felony, in violation of NRS 200.481. Count 5. Is that one? Count five, performance of act or neglect of duty in willful or wanton disregard of safety of persons or property resulting in substantial bodily harm or death. 
in Category C felony in violation of NRS 202.595, Count 6, Battery by Prisoner, a Category B felony in violation of NRS 200.4812F, and Count 7, Unlawful Act Relating to Human Excrement or Bodily Fluid, Category B felony in violation of NRS 212.189. Is that right, sir? Yes. Okay. Is the state satisfied with that canvas? Yes, sir. Okay. At this time, I am going to allow um, Mr. Redden to withdraw his original guilty pleas to counts two through seven. And I am, it is the finding of the court. The defendant is fully competent and capable of entering an informed plea with respect to the uh, seven counts here, and that your plea of guilty but mentally ill is a knowing and voluntary plea supported by an independent basis in fact, containing the essential elements of the offense charge, and for that reason, this court accepts your guilty pleas. We need to give this gentleman a sentencing date. Yes, and I believe the defense counsel is requesting 60 days. Yes, Your Honor. 60 days? Yes. I think we can accommodate that. Court's in order, Sure. Judge, just for the record, was the uh, Mr. Arnold's acknowledgement attached to the guilty plea agreement? I got it. Yes. The certificate of counsel? Yes. It's there. Thank you. Okay. And go ahead. November the 7th, would you like a special time, Your Honor? Um, you want a special time? Yes, please. Uh, usually I have my calendar at 8.30. Uh, do you want to do it uh, after? Like, or do you want to do it in the afternoon? Um, we can do it in the afternoon. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Afternoon would be better. Oh, I, I, now this shouldn't be a Wednesday. No. I'm saying that on a Thursday. Okay. Yeah, because I... I I've gotten where I just want to sit on, but there's just no oh. way I can get it done. Um, right now, we've got six criminal sessions on that. Um, I could probably do it at noon if you want to just do it at noon. Whatever was on this practice, that's fine. Okay. We'll, okay. Just take a, we'll just take a later lunch, okay? <laughs> November the 7th at noon. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And Ms. Clerk, I'd like uh, these documents. Uh, this uh, Dr. Pagmini's report, uh, left side file, as well as uh, Leo Rowley, uh, Dr. Leo Rowley's uh, report, left side file. Okay. Okay, and thank you uh, very much. Uh, well, wait, uh, Mr. Arnold, do you want to take the defendant out now? I'm just going to tell the jury. Oh, yeah, we don't need him. Yeah. You don't need him? Yeah, need. Okay. All right. Are you ready for me to invite the jury in? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, yeah, I had to find you. That's great. Sure. Yeah, I don't know if I want to take him I'm so sorry, I got to jump until exactly when I'm just that there's a resolution. It doesn't matter. Okay. She had to get up there and relay that. Breaks my heart. Okay. 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 I like this judge. All right, well, counsel, please stipulate to the presence of the jury. Okay, um, you all be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that was a very long break, but there's a reason for it, and that is that the parties have resolved their differences between them. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, should I go ahead and tell them? Okay, essentially what uh, Mr. Redden did was that he pled guilty to all the charges set forth within the second amended indictment, uh, guilty but mentally ill. Uh, so as the uh, case has been resolved, I can uh, excuse you now and release you from your service. I want to thank you very, very much for taking your time. I, I, I really do appreciate it. It's the only civil service that we do over our country, but it is really a necessary service, and I really do appreciate it, and you are excused from my thanks. At this point, you may say, well, can we talk about our experience? If you had a good experience in this courtroom, say yes, we had a great experience in Department 22. If you didn't, I'd appreciate that you're not. <laughs> okay. uh, but yes, you may talk about your experience, and I certainly hope that whatever you have to say does encourage others to um, engage in jury service as well. So um, we're going to take you in the back, get all your badges and all of your stuff, uh, and uh, the lawyers may want to talk to you. And uh, if they do, I would certainly encourage you to do that, because I know I learned a lot whenever I was a lawyer sitting at those tables to hear what, what, what jurors had to say. I think it made me a better lawyer. Okay. All right, guys. What do you do? Put them in the hallway. Just do once a week. Okay. Yeah. Just, yeah. No, bring your notebooks. Bring the candy bucket. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. And counsel, I may want to meet with you in the, the back hallway. Uh, not now, but likely until they get to the jury room. By the way, the jury has not left the courtroom until that door closes. The jury has left the courtroom. No. All right, I am going to encourage them to talk with you, but in the meantime, I'd like to talk to you guys first, okay? All right. Um.
Yeah, the washer too, so cute. Okay, so um, that's it. And um, I think I think under the circumstances, um, especially since they found that he does in fact suffer from mental illness and medication does in fact help him that he made a very good decision um i'm very sorry however that the judge and her family had to relive that just then so and the other thing that i wanted to say is if y'all saw me um i was trying to get over to get to one of my my caramel hard candies and uh my, my what do you call it oh this thing this this my cord to the computer Woo. to the headphone oh my heavens so that's it for this trial there wasn't a whole lot um wasn't a whole lot to say but I know that I saw the attack and I myself have been waiting for this and they sure didn't take very long to get it to court. So I hope you've enjoyed it and you have a great day and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.